Today's video, we're partnering up with accountability, a tax and accounting firm. This is a double wide manufactured home that made $100,000 in six months and continues to split off $7,500 a month in passive rental income. And this is Jenny. And she makes over $300,000 a year with a rental portfolio that she started less than two years ago. Now this simple home is located in one of the hottest markets, but still could not sell. Then she swooped in like a bat out of night and bought it for only $23,000 down. And it is already a staple in her portfolio, churning out cash and equity. Jenny is actually one of our members in our Land Hacker community and program who saw the potential of this property and now it's changing her life. Link below if you're interested in joining us and you want to set up a call to see if it's a good fit. So here's what happened. One of my students invited me out to their property to check out an insane cash flowing machine. And as a sucker for last minute adventures, naturally, I said yes. Also, Jenny happened to prove me wrong on this project, so I had to go see it for myself. And now we're back at the airport with a last minute ticket to go check out the property in person and for me to deliver this to her in person because of the mistake that I made, small mistake. But this isn't just a gift for her, it's also for you. So make sure you watch this all the way to the end so you can see what it is. One slight problem. The only time that our schedules actually lined up was in 48 hours and I'm already on another trip that I'm taking because of a deal that I'm working on. So in order to make this work, we have to get to Arizona, road trip out to Jenny's property, then turn around, get back to the airport and fly back to Austin, Texas so I can get back to my deal. All of this has to be done in 24 hours. Game on. First, we're catching a flight to Phoenix. Two, we have to get to our Turo car to drive towards the Grand Canyon. Three, get to the property and hide my I'm sorry gift. And then four, meet with Jenny and see what a cash cow manufactured home looks like. And then finally dig into her costs and profits to see how she's secretly raking in over $300,000 a year in rental income. And as I'm about to jump on the plane, I've got a favor to ask of you. Subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more videos that I'll be putting out that highlight unique properties and the way that their owners are creatively and cleverly converting them into cash machines, including one property that I just purchased, like literally just purchased. We're currently at 68,000 subscribers and we have a goal of 100,000 before the end of the year. And if you wanna support us at all, hit that bell and the subscribe button if you like this type of content. For this trip, I'm traveling with my camera guy, Eugene. Now, Eugene has what we'll call a personal challenge when he travels. Big question though, we just got out of the restroom. Eugene, did you, did you go number two? <laughs> bro, <laughs> come on. He's been having issues. Did you do I it? I told you that in confidence, bro. So as any good friend would do, I like to check in on him and film it. Hey, big question for you. Yeah. Did you poop yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get to our Turo rental car. So we're in Phoenix and we need to drive out to the Grand Canyon, which is about three hours away to get to the property. And so we have to race there, so we still have daylight to film. Ah! Just kidding. We're in a Ford Focus today with 90 horsepower and there's a lot of big hills. I actually got a speeding ticket going down one of these hills. During the road trip, Eugene tried again. Bro, <laughs> did you do it? No success. All right, so we made it here to Phoenix, Arizona. We're actually driving three hours north, so we've got a little bit of a road trip. We've got some snacks, we've got some drinks, but Eugene, I've got a deal to strike with you. The property that we're going to check out, there's three distinct reasons why it does so well financially. It books out really well, makes a lot of money for its owner. If you can figure out or determine the three reasons why that place does better than any other listing. I'll buy you dinner tonight. Easy. Got it? Yeah. Deal? Deal. Shake on it. All right. We're here in sunny Arizona, just about two and a half hours north of Phoenix and about 40 minutes south of the Grand Canyon. And this house behind me is making about $5,000 each month with passive income. Eugene. Yeah. Can you guess why this place is so good? I'm beginning to think that it's good because it's close to the Grand Canyon. Am I correct? Dude, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's actually one of the big ones. So the Grand Canyon actually brings in over 6 million visitors every single year. And most of those folks, they drive through this area, which is Williams, Arizona, which is about 30, 40 minutes away from the Grand Canyon, depending on where you're at. And so if everybody's coming through here, a lot of these places can make a lot of money. That's where you see a lot of glam sites and such. 
Now, that was a freebie. I think I told you that answer a little bit earlier. There's two other things that you have to come up with about what makes this place so amazing. Otherwise, dinner's on you. And I get to pick the place. I think I know the next one. I think it's because this place- Oh, wait, wait not yet, not yet. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you well, later on. We'll go through. Right. Guys, you, let, we'll do the tour in a little bit and then I want you to keep telling me. No, right. don't, don't give all the secrets out right away. But also what makes this place really amazing location-wise is that we're also really close to four key areas. Phoenix, two and a half hours away. That's a great population to pull in people. And then we've got Flagstaff, which has Northern Arizona University. Hint, hint, I actually used to work for them. And then also, there's Arizona, which is a wildlife safari type of thing here. And we're relatively close to Sedona and Slide Rock. So there's a lot going in in this little area. And then of course the Grand Canyon too. This was pretty rough when Jenny first got it. <laughs> it actually looked more like one of those portable classrooms used in schools rather than an actual home, which is because this is actually a manufactured home, a double wide, and people didn't want it. People actually didn't want it so badly that the seller was very motivated to sell it and even offered seller financing. But with some grit and a small investment, this place has turned into a highly profitable short-term rental. Here's the crazy thing. She didn't do any of the work. I just let her do her thing and voila, who, I showed up with date, my sister-in-law. Oh, okay. you, were, like, well, you weren't involved with it at all? No, not really. Oh, really? No. Be honest with that. Tell us because a lot of people, okay. that, a lot of people who are watching this. They think this, they have to be they involved. They think they have to do everything. And I, I try to tell okay. them, I was like, you don't. You just have to get the right team together. Speaking of which, this is Jenny. Hey. So Jenny's actually one of our Rockstar members in the Land Hacker program and there's Literally, tons of people just like Jenny, but Jenny really stood out because she's one of our first students and we are at one of her properties that we're discussing today. All right, I wanna take a quick moment and tell you about a secret that helped me save and make a lot of money to a point where I was able to quit my day job in my 20s. It was understanding taxes. And just like Jenny's property here that's creating a ton of equity and money for the investment that she put in, the real advantages are on the tax side. Now imagine not having to legally pay taxes just because you have a good strategy or plan. All the while you're making more money. That's what happens when you work with tax professionals and strategists, or you just understand tax laws and tax codes inside and out. And with tax season just around the corner, I wanna invite you to work with accountability, a taxing and accounting firm. Full transparency, this is a company that I'm a part of because I actually love what they're doing and they've been doing my personal business taxes for the past 18 years. But they're true masters with real estate investments and entrepreneurs running businesses. That's their niche. Now we can even do cost segregation for you to take advantage of bonus depreciation. And if you don't understand what I just said, <laughs> I don't blame you, but set up a free call with my main accountant, Kevin, and he can get you all squared away. Link down below. Now. Do you, is it okay to give us a tour yes, of the place? Yes, I would love to. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So I bought this property and people were shocked. This was a dilapidated, beat up, 1984 manufactured home and uh, nobody recommended that I purchase it. It was in terrible shape. It was actually a fix and flip and it was done very poorly. In fact, it was definitely the epitome of lipstick on a pig. Um, <laughs> the only thing that was done was new flooring and nothing else was done properly. And I really don't have much of a, an eye for design. so. I had my sister-in-law, Heather, who did an incredible job on this property. So I walked in a couple months later to this, and it was just done beautifully. So we chose the Southwest design. This is the living room, and uh, follow me into the kitchen. So we have completely renovated the kitchen. This was completely outdated. The cabinets were literally from 1984. The last time I was here before our remodel was done, I saw a rat just kind of scurry oh. past me. So we completely you know, tore everything out, um, put all new cabinets in, butcher block countertop. We did the backsplash, made it nice and modern. Jenny put together a really cool team. So first one is? Heather. Heather, our designer. And then? Handyman, Jacob. And then? And Amber, his wife. Jacob and Amber, our handyman and his wife did an amazing job and they're local to the area. Also my handyman in Oklahoma and his wife, Noah and Charlotte were a big part of it as well. And Maria, my cleaner. Yeah, she's a big that's part your of it team. as well. Yep, that's my team. And that allows you to live a normal life and not have yes. to be here. I've actually not stepped foot in this property since we launched at the very end of June and it's mid-October. Nice. Eugene, dude, remember, we were just talking about it. 
Second guess? Design. The backsplash, the design, okay. Yeah. The design is what really attracts a lot of folks. So what Jenny was just saying earlier outside, why this is outperforming a lot of the houses that may be inside the city, mm -hmm. it's because she did a really good job with the photos and the design itself. So one thing that is just kind of like, you just learn after doing it for a while, is eventually the ones, the blinds with the strings, will almost always eventually get worn out, broken, just through guests just pulling on it over and over again. Mm -hmm. So this is really nice. I saw this, I was like, oh, this is so smart. And it's really satisfying. Where'd you get all the furniture? Local places in Phoenix, hodgepodge, offer up. Oh, okay. We ordered some of it. Kind okay. of all over the place. Okay. We did a total renovation for the, everything had to come out of here. All right, and then this is the uh, the main bedroom. Yes. I love the oversized bed. Mm -hmm. It adds a lot to the room. Yeah. And this was all through OfferUp as well? I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't all through OfferUp. No? Some of it was probably brand new. So one of the big things yep. in the photos that makes Airbnbs look really good, there's two, there actually there's three key areas. It's the kitchen, bathroom, and then it's the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And the bedrooms are really big because that's obviously where people want to sleep and stay. So it has to look really clean and then well designed. And a good hot tip if you ever want to create a really cool bedroom is that you look at what hotels are doing and then you copy that. And you, yeah. she did a really good she job. She did here. awesome. I love this whole thing. Looks great. Mm -hmm. And then you even have this nice little coffee bar over here. Yep. I know this is becoming more a trend. I never, I don't drink coffee, so I don't, I don't know. But then I started realizing people were putting coffee bars inside their bedrooms. Yeah. Which makes sense when you first wake up and you're just yeah. like, okay, let's turn it on while you're getting ready. Awesome. How many square feet is this place? Is it like a thousand, I think? I think so. I believe. Yeah. Thousand, two bedroom, two bath. Yep. This is awesome. And then so yeah. the overall remodel is roughly about 50,000? Yes. Okay. Did you use yes. a lot? Well, we'll talk more about the numbers here in a little yeah. bit. So I know a lot had been done on the outside, just painting alone. Oh, yeah. Right? This whole thing had to be built, pretty much this whole deck. Uh huh. Lots of landscaping. Who had the vision for the exterior? Actually, my crew in Oklahoma, my handyman there, uh -huh. they had the vision. They did all the white, the right, the white rock. It was another contractor that did this golf area. Yeah, there's supposed to be like a whole golf setup. Like, this is such a good idea. I called it the Redneck Golf Course. <laughs> so this is like our fire pit, and that's where dogs, you know, because all of our rentals are pet, my rentals are pet friendly. Oh, okay. I think it's critical. Right. You have to be pet friend, pet friendly. You book more. I sure. Think. And guests comment all the time on the big yard. Yeah. We had one review where they said they felt like they were camping, but in like a nice house. So they kind of got the big yard. They got right. the best of everything close right. to the Grand Canyon. Stars come out at night. It's like the whole experience, you know? That's awesome. Tell me a little bit more about what you guys did to the outside here. So we wanted to do something modern. And we went with dark blue because it's contemporary. It's pretty, it's neutral enough. Mm -hmm. And then we, we wanted the door to pop. So we chose red. And Was um, that Heather's idea? I think that was actually my idea. Yeah. That was one of the few ideas Smart. I had. It I does really on the red door, the bright red door. Third guess, making this place amazing. I think I got this one. What is it? The outside area is very welcoming. Yes. You got the fireplace, you got the little goal. The mini miniature golfing area. Miniature yeah. golf, yeah. You can really create amazing experiences both inside and outside. And so it almost, it magnifies the space and it elevates it. So a lot of times when people are coming to locations like this, they want not just to be trapped inside, especially like a place around like Grand Canyon, you're naturally getting customers or guests who are hikers, outdoor adventurers, that type of stuff. They don't want to be trapped inside all the time. All right, so let's talk about the numbers here real quick. So can you tell us how much did you buy this place for, this property? 230,000. 230,000 for how many acres? One acre. One acre and one structure. Yes. So you're on an HOA? I guess so. <laughs> Okay. I forgot. <laughs> you forgot. All right. When you run five short-term rentals, you just uh, it's all blends together. I hear you. I hear you. How much did you put down? Ten percent. So, so twenty-three thousand. Perfect. So you got this place for twenty-three thousand when a place looked like this, and then you put in approximately how much into the remodel? About fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand, and then we gave Heather, or you gave Heather, a budget of. 18,000. 18,000. So all said and done, $91,000. Yep. And then did you, uh, you came to that with just cash on table? For the remodel and mm -hmm. the furniture, yes. Yes, okay. And then obviously the down payment. Yep. And the loan. Okay. So right now, currently, how much is your HOA, taxes, insurance, utilities, mortgage, uh, everything for this one property? Everything is under 1,800 for the month. Really? Mm -hmm. Under 1,800, okay. How much are you averaging? Because I know that you guys just started up in July. Mm-hmm. 
How much are, have you been averaging each month since July? About 6,000 per month. 6,000, leaving you, what is that profitability of? About 4,000. 4,000? Mm -hmm. And then does that, does that include Jacob the handyman and uh, Maria cleaner? That, yeah, that includes all that. Really, so f you're averaging about 4,000, but you just had a great month. Yep, right so now, October. right now we, um, we had a really good month, about 7,500, but our average is about 6,000. That's in October. And then what made this month so different? It's, you know, it's beyond the heat of the summer. It's not cold yet. It's not snowing yet. Yeah. So maybe it's just, it's a good time of year. It's not in the nineties anymore, but snow's not on the ground. So yeah. it just might be that perfect time. We have some fall colors in Northern Arizona too. Right. Where are they coming from? They come from all over. Um, we actually have someone checking in today who's coming from Hong Kong. Oh, really? We had a few people from Europe, um, a lot of people from California, some people from different parts of Arizona, people mm -hmm. from all different states. Wow. So all over. That's amazing. Now, the big question is how much equity, so you bought for 230, how mm -hmm. much is this place roughly worth right now? Because I know the market's all over the place, yeah. but roughly how much is it worth right now? It's worth about 320,000. So that's basically, right you've basically made back your money that you put into it, including yes. the down payment. Yep. And then every single month, you're making anywhere between four to five thousand a month, mm -hmm. passively, semi-passively, semi-passively, yes. semi-passively. Okay. Yes. How much work do you actually put into this each week? About an hour. An hour. A week. So four hours a month nets you about four to five thousand a month. Yes. Off one property. Yes. And you've got other properties. Yes. Other properties that we'll go check out soon. She's got a really cool one in Tennessee that I want everybody to see. Okay, last question for you here, Jenny, is if you could go back and give yourself advice after going through a project like this, what would you tell them? I would say always vet your contractors and your handyman. Um, I absolutely love the team that I have right now, but in the very beginning of this project, we had one contractor who did, who did some exterior work that I didn't vet and used really uh, bad materials and we didn't have the best experience. And a lot of that work had to be redone. So I absolutely love the team that I have right now, but um, whoever you choose for any big projects, always vet that person and always have things in writing too, as far as what the agreement is and yep. what you're gonna pay and what the work is to be done. That's my biggest piece of advice. Cool. A lot of people shut down this idea and told us not to even think about it. There's not, you know, there's, it's not gonna rise in equity and don't do it and yeah, but, um, but at the end of the day, the numbers work and if yeah. the numbers work, and guests absolutely love it. And when you look at the reviews of our property compared to so many other properties, even in the town of Williams, yeah. people rave about this property. So don't be afraid to think outside the box. And if you have to buy a manufactured home to make the numbers work, do it. Yeah. <laughs> and people uh, rave more about this property than some of our other properties that are not manufactured homes. Because of the mistake that I, I told you or I said, don't do this, or I was like not super excited about it and you totally proved me wrong. Built a ton of equity, <laughs> ton of semi-passive income now. Is uh, I wanna bring a little bit of gift that we brought from Portland. And it's one of my favorite business books that I'll leave it, I'm gonna leave it here for guests to read. And also awesome. for any viewers who wanna come, we're gonna put Jenny's uh, Airbnb link just down below. And if you read this book or you just open it, there's a little note in it from me. And then if you find that note, yeah, I'll give you a nice little shout out. You have my email address in there too. So I'm gonna leave this here for awesome, folks. Awesome, thank you. And I'm gonna put it right down here. Nice, okay. thank you so much. We love it. All right, that's it. I We're done. It. Awesome. Yo. Password. <laughs> Open Sesame. Hey. How'd you do? Success. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate the salad. More fiber in my system. There you go. You did it, folks. We won. Yeah.